everyone and welcome to the Facebook Hub. Thank you so much for joining us today um, on the Facebook Hub. This is our first live webinar and um, today we're just going to be meeting some of the experts, some of the team and hopefully going to be able to help you a little bit with any marketing queries that you might have. Um, in a minute I'm going to introduce some of the team but I'd just like to thank first of all our sponsor and our tech partner today, Fox Wiley. Uh, Johnny from Fox Wiley is going to be joining us a bit later on to discuss his business with us as well. So um, without further ado, if I could first of all introduce Stephen, Stephen Gordon Wilson to you. He is a director at Proper. Hello, Stephen, how are you today? Hello, I'm all right, thank you. Good afternoon. <laughs> thank you for having um, me, Sophie. Sorry? Thank you for having me. You're so welcome, you're so welcome. <laughs> so, look, um, are we Susanna Reid and Piers Morgan? Is that who we're being today? I, I mean, could maybe we could have said that two weeks ago, but I'm not mm. sure that it's the most relevant thing to say now. <laughs> maybe I really not. Don't know about it. <laughs> maybe uh, not. Yeah. Uh, so, well, yes, I'm going to introduce Paul for you today as well. He's the other director. If we could just say hello to Paul, is he about? Hello. You're on mute, Paul. Can I be we the weatherman? <laughs> Yeah, you can be the weatherman, only if you're very confronting, though. Yes. And uh, <laughs> and um, Andrew, unfortunately, who isn't here with us at the moment, uh, plays a very important part on the proper team. He heads up the words and pictures pillar of our business, and hopefully we're going to get him on at some point to talk on one of these webinars for us. Okay. So, um, Stephen, I'm just going to talk to you first, if that's all mm. right. Um, a lot of people here today will will know that one of the main pillars of um, our sort of relaunched business um, revolves around high street retail marketing. Um, yeah. And I know that your expertise lies in that area, uh, shopping centre marketing particularly. And there'll be a lot of businesses that, you know, due to the pandemic had to come off the high street, they had to shut down or, or just temporarily close. Um, okay. what's, the, what's the best advice that you could give or the simplest advice that you could give to anyone here or listening in that situation that would help them with that sort of bounce back process? Sure, I mean, it, it depends almost on where you are in your process, hopefully, with any luck as a retailer during the pandemic, you've been working online and you've had an online store. If you haven't, now's the time to get one and start making sure you're trading online. But most importantly, in answer to your question, as we get closer to being live and really on the street is making sure that your online and your offline are integrated because actually if your online experience and your offline experience don't talk to one another then you're really missing a trick uh, both in terms of, of branding in terms of the way your customers operate and all of those kind of things so that's my number one tip make sure your your online and your offline talk and actually that that the background to that is making sure really that your customer experience is right. That's sort of the, the fundamental line. When we're in bricks and mortar, customer experience is, is one thing, isn't it? They, they walk into your shop, what do they see? The old argument is everybody turns left. So when they turn left, what do they see? Um, if it's a Saturday, have you got kids entertainment on and someone handing out balloons? All that stuff, what's your customer experience? When we're in a shop, that's one thing. When we're online, customer experience is something totally different. So number one, get your customer experience online right, and then number two, make sure it integrates with what you're doing offline. And it's really important for those sort of to be in sync, isn't it? And make sure that you're not kind of projecting one message on your online platforms and, and one message in your sort of your physical company culture. It's important that they're very aligned. Absolutely. And, and online strategy is really important because you could be, let's say you're a, a, a health food store for argument's sake, um, and you are uh, on in your store promoting healthy living, promoting green living, but then all of a sudden on Facebook, you're sharing things to do with takeaways. Silly example, but you need to make sure that what you're doing on your social and what you're doing on your online marries up with your values. And I'm really excited that Sophie Neal is here today. We'll talk to her a bit later on, um, who knows everything. She, If someone said to me, who's going to run my social media for me, I would send them to Sophie every single time because she completely gets why small businesses do social media. Absolutely. And so if we're talking about small businesses, then, um, you know, a, a big part of, of their brand will be will be engrossed in their kind of community and their kind of community culture. So mm -hmm. why, why is community building so important when it comes to local businesses who want to expand or even just sort of maintain their client basis? You know, are there are there specific strategies to aid that process? 
Well, community, you're absolutely right, is crucial. And actually, I'll take a, a question from, from the audience. Heather has sent us a message saying that she's a newly opened baking business in MK. Hello, uh, Heather. Congratulations on the new business. And she has Facebook and Instagram. But how does she promote word of mouth, especially during COVID? She doesn't have a shop front as she works from home. And actually, we can we can answer both of those questions, I think, with the same answer. And that is you have a product and you've, I'm sure, had they got a brilliant product. And if you want us to test it, we'll happily do that. You know, we'll put our address on the screen and we'll taste what you want to send us. <laughs> um, uh, Facebook and Instagram, brilliant. And we'll go and have a look at them. And I'm sure you're doing wonderful things with those. In terms of word of mouth, that's where community building comes in. So what we what you don't want to be doing, in my opinion, on your social media is just every day. Here's my latest sausage roll. Here's my latest bun. This is how much it costs. Here's my product. That's important. And you should be doing that. But also it's about building that community. So perhaps you are speaking to somebody who you know has tasted your product and you know is brilliant. So get them on to talk about it. And, and it's about word of mouth online, first of all. So, for example, Paul might say, I tried Heather's hot cross buns and they were flipping lovely. And he'd post that on his social media, tag you in. And that's kind of the online word of mouth piece. It's kind of like testimonials in a way, isn't it? these testimonials and that's that's kind of part one and that's that you could get that far and you could stop but in terms of how that then develops into word of mouth paul's already bought into you because he's eating your hot cross buns and he likes the product that's lovely but the next step is actually on your social media you might say paul because you like the hot cross buns and i know that you've had a, a busy week at home because i've seen that on your social we'll send you a hot cross bun or next time you come in have 50 percent off your hot cross buns or something like that you're engaging with him as a customer then he's not only going to just share it he's going to go and talk to his mates about it and when he speaks to somebody verbally he'll say do you know what this bakery knows their stuff and they're a good they're a great company it then doesn't become a hot about the hot cross bun it becomes about heather grayson's bakery it becomes about you as a personality and and it's all about building that community i hope that answers both questions and if not let's keep chatting in the comments and then um, that kind oh, of I know is Paul's desperate for a hot cross bun now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you are <laughs> um, and that kind of ties in with diversifying your content and diversifying your kind of styles for marketing, mm. doesn't it? Because it's one thing, you know, putting leaflets through people's doors and, and, and paying for advertisements, but that kind of parallel with, with social media and, and having the two cross over and align at the same time is going to be really mm. important. So that would be important for someone like Heather who's just starting out. She needs Absolutely. to make sure that she's exploring all those avenues. Would, would that be yeah, fair? Totally. And we'll give Heather a shout out. It's a Blue Moon Bakery. She's just posted on in the comments. And she'll send us some brownies and cakes. Oh, um, no. yes. Love you, Heather. Can give them you a you. You've <laughs> asked a question there, uh, Heather, about testimonials. If Can we pop a pin in that? Because I'd really like to put that to Sophie Neal when she's on a bit later on. Um, I'm bored of talking about me because I'm I'm not very exciting. Let's talk to uh, Paul Kitchen, who uh, and and proper marketing really. Paul was your baby, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and and started in the literal sense of the word proper um, marketing done properly. Um, mm. There was just an opinion, but there was a lack of it. So um, you either join that lack or you do something about it, and that's really where proper came from. Mm -hmm. And and things have obviously changed. So your focus has changed. You've relaunched. You've you've got Sophie and I and some others on board. Um, why now? Why why are you relaunching? Why did you choose to relaunch now? Well, funny enough, very much linked to what you just said about communities. Um, if if the pandemic gave us anything in business, it was the chance to stop for a minute, take a break, have a look at what we're doing well, have a look at what we're not doing so well, and actually have a look at how everyone else is doing what they're doing. Um, so a bit of a sort of a journey, really, uh, having a look at we'd spent two and a half years as advisors where we just sold our time. And um, I, I said just sold our time. We did a great job of selling our time. And it was very important and all those things. But that's all we did. Um, we got on with the work. And actually, when you start looking at how other people do it, and this is other people in America, there's some in Australia, New Zealand, look at agencies like ours that sell their time. Um, but various different agencies, not just marketing. And actually, I started seeing the common thread was that they uh, were building communities. And uh, better than that, they weren't just selling advice. They were giving away advice cool. and building communities by doing that. Uh, and it was inspiring. I thought, great, I could learn something here. And I'm, I'm hopping about on their websites and, and learning and jumping in their hubs and their, their, their webinars like this. 
Um, and hearing real people talk about their experience of how their business needs to change and so on and so on, thinking, oh, we need to do that. We, we, need, to, we need to help real people who own real businesses to engage, understand marketing, understand what they're being told, uh, all those things. And putting that behind a payment gateway is almost not fair. And it will stop people liking us and just like us. There's nothing in here for you to buy. Just just like us and get involved and join the conversation. So that was it, really. And and I think, as you say, Paul, our, our kind of our kind of client focus has been reshifted in a way, because whereas before we might might deal with kind of bigger corporations, now we're kind of focusing on the community a bit more. We're, we're trying to help startups, SMEs, people that don't always have a lot of budget and just. Just need some of those simple uh, kind of tips and advice without all the jargon and without all the complicatedness that surrounds it. Yeah. Um, we we've been shouting quite a lot about the phrase "master your own marketing" on all our kind of socials at the moment. Um, can you kind of tell us exactly what what we mean when we talk about that? Yeah, um, and it is master your own marketing. So again, very literal, very, like proper, very literal, literal. Um, master it, understand what it is. You don't need to do it, but you do need to understand it. And you need to, better than that, you need to understand what you're being told. So um, you know what it's like, the metrics of marketing, shares, likes, comments, reach, engagement, conversion, all those different things that marketers use as currency and uh, ways to tell you how hard they've worked and all the things you've actually bought for your dollar. Um, and, and actually, you need to understand those things. You need to understand what they mean, um, which ones are actual currency that you could possibly almost bank, uh, and then the other ones, which you need to know, and they're good to have, and, and you should keep an eye on them, but they're not ones you can rely on. Um, and uh, so it, it's just yeah, really that. Um, there was just an opinion, but... Oh, something spoke to me. I spoke to my <laughs> <mom. laughs> For you isn't it that's, that's, that's good paul i think that's, that's absolutely right and uh it's, it's really important i think that this whole hub the whole purpose of having the hub is so people can come on and just get advice and more importantly probably talk to one another and share yeah. advice and collaborate um we're going to be that's talking right. a bit about collaboration as well later on we've got uh uh our event sponsor johnny from fox wiley is going to be talking a bit about uh, what he does and also Tim Lee is coming to join us who runs a fabulous networking group but it was an interesting story because Paul and Tim and Johnny and I all kind of knew each other and then all collaborated in different ways and finally managed to put it together so that'll be interesting but collaboration and uh, uh, talking to one another is important there's some comments come in on the the webinar thanks everyone for joining in um, it might be um, what's a polite way of saying it's time to tell Paul to shove off <laughs> oh, I was going to ask you one more great thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come back later. Yeah, see you in a bit. The bar's open. Um, uh, Stephen John commented saying um, what you're saying is that we should make all of Heather's followers brand ambassadors. And I think that's true, uh, Stephen and Heather, to an extent. Absolutely. But you need to turn your customers into your fans. And actually, there's, th this wasn't a, pr a planted prop. This is a book that I swear by. It was written by the... Um, by the uh, founder of Metro Bank. And, and the whole book is exactly about that. They're not your customers, make them your fans. Um, and you do that through community building. And, and But it's an interesting one, isn't it? And, and I'd love to talk more about this in the comments. Um, have you noticed Paul's still not shoved off? Give give Johnny a nudge to get him off the screen. Oh, um, Johnny. <laughs> there's, there he goes. Um, we, we can talk about that a bit more about the ways of creating brand ambassadors. Um, but Sophie Neal is, is our expert, and we'll get her on in just a second. Uh, Samantha said hello as well and asked the question, do you think that ads on social media are worth paying for or better to build organically? I am going to shut up and welcome our guest speaker, Sophie Neal, into the webinar. Yes. Sophie, hello, hello. Hi. Hi, guys. <laughs> Hi. Before you, before, we're going to throw you straight in at the deep end. Before you tell us about you, those that question really will put to you do you think ads on social media are worth paying for or is it better to build organically um i think it's really good to use like a bit of a two-pronged approach um social media is like as you said it's a tool to build a community but it's when you're talking about ads it can also be used as an acquisition tool so um you know if you've got a, a resource or a special offer uh that's something that you should totally be promoting um using paid social 
uh, get someone to give their email address in return for, uh, you know, like I said, a discount or a free resource. Um, and then you have them on your email list and you've got their details so you can let them know um, about all the amazing fans, uh, all the amazing things that you're doing. And like you said, Stephen, you can then turn them into that fan um, that will buy whatever you put in front of them. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So tell us a bit about you, Sophie. What do you do? Tell us about your business. Uh, so, um, yeah, I'm Sophie and uh, I run the Milton Keynes Food and Lifestyle blog, Sophie, etc. Um, at the moment, I do the social media for Bletchley Park, um, which I'm sure you will have heard of. Um, and at the moment, I'm in the process of launching my own business uh, to offer social media to small businesses. So I've been blogging for eight years now um, and for the last three years I've really worked hard on building um, a brand around Sophie etc so becoming the go-to for places to eat and things to do in Milton Keynes. Um, I don't work with big brands I only work with small businesses uh, local to Milton Keynes um, and yeah I'm sort of now on the next stage of of building the social media brand. <laughs> And um, you, you say, Sophie, that, you know, you, you work with small businesses and you really try to aid them and, and how they can use social media and their online presence. Um, there will be a lot of people, and like we spoke about with Stephen earlier, that maybe don't, you know, startups or people that post-COVID have had to come online and have never mm -hmm. had to use social media before. Um, how and kind of when can that really aid a business? You know, like what, what's kind of the best tip that you'd give somebody that is literally just starting out online? So I think starting with a plan is always a, a good place to start. Um, I think it's very easy to look at social media and sort of think, oh my goodness, I've got to be on every platform. Like I need to be on Facebook, I need to be on Twitter, I need to be on Instagram. You know, I might look at TikTok or Pinterest and all the rest of it. Um, but the reality of it is, is if you've got a business to run, you can't be running like five or six different channels. Like you pay people full time to do that job and there's still not enough time in the week um but um yeah like starting off with a plan and sort of picking two like maybe one or two platforms that you really think okay yeah I can sustain this and I can sustain a presence um on these platforms and um I think the two I would usually go for would be Facebook and Instagram just because they're quite well equipped for small businesses um you know over the last year Facebook who obviously own Instagram as well, um, they've they've worked quite hard to put a lot of tools in. So things like storefronts on Instagram, um, you know, having the small business sticker that you can use on Instagram stories to recommend other small businesses. Um, Facebook's also got the shop. Um, you know, they're putting up paid events online. So all these tools are available free to use for small businesses. Um, you don't have to, to pay for them. Um, and I just, yeah, you know, having a play with all of those different tools and, and seeing how they can work for you is a really good place to start. Um, and as Stephen said before, you know, use social media to build your brand and your personality and your community. Like you don't just have to be really salesy on it. And I think that's a misconception that a lot of businesses have um, because it's not like running your own personal profile when you can sort of keep plugging the same thing um but you know you need to incorporate different types of content so um you know uh, post about your latest product but also behind the scenes content um as well yeah so it's, it's kind of all about putting that kind of face face to a name really isn't it and yes. just getting your kind of brand recognized for you and your company <laughs> culture and your and that and that's what we want when we go to small businesses we, we want to know about their about them, not just what they sell mm -hmm. and what they do. So that's really good for, social media is really good for that because that kind of promotes that brand culture, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. And um, I think a question that comes up a lot when we're trying to, you know, encourage people as a marketing strategy to use social media is, you know, okay, so I can track my metrics on there, I can track my engagement, which, you know, I think is really important. And some people will disagree with me, but I think the reason that people disagree with me sometimes is because, they say, well, you know, I, I can I can see how many likes it got and I can see what time of days it did well and I can see who shared it, but that, that doesn't sell my product. That doesn't make me any money. So how can that be converted? How can that engagement online be converted into, in, into actually growing the business? 
So I think, um, yeah, again, you've just hit the nail on the head there. Um, I used to work in PR, so um, telling people that press coverage wouldn't always translate to um, sales. I'm quite used to that. Um, but as I said, the aim of every post doesn't have to be about selling your product. And it's about giving value to your audience um, so that, you know, when you do come to sell them the product, they're a little bit more likely to buy it and, that you know, they're bought into the brand. Um, and for me, um, social media posts should always have one of four different aims and that's attracting someone. So having to think about what your audience are looking for, like, can you can you solve a problem that they've got? How are they going to find you on? Are you creating a piece of content on social media that will help someone find out about your business um, and then engaging? So encouraging them to do something, whether that's making a recipe with your product that you shared, um, encouraging them to share their own experience of something um, and just, you know, encouraging that discussion, asking them to tag friends, asking them to leave comments and answering a question that you've put to them um, and then capturing which is, you know, like I said earlier, getting them on your email list, bringing them into that inner circle, whether that's your your Facebook group or your email list. Um, and then obviously another aim is to convert them. So, you know, turn them into a paying customer. Um, and I think if you sort of hit those four different purposes of the posts that you're putting up, um, it helps you create a bit more of a well-rounded presence on social media and you're not always you know, banging the sales drum. Yeah, absolutely. It's about that kind of two-way conversation, isn't it? Buying exactly. Thing, it kind of makes it makes your community and your following feel like they're involved and that you're mm -hmm. really interacting with them. Um, Steve and I were having a conversation earlier about influencers and how there's a bit of a misconception about influencing. It's not just somebody with a blue tick next to their name that sells makeup. You know, you, anyone can be an influencer. If you have a small business, you can influence your, you know, people with your small business and, and I'm interested to understand a bit about um about micro influencing um yeah. you know so how an influencer can market sort of positively and 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 that how that can impact a small business cool um so for people who aren't sure an influencer by definition um is someone within a niche or an industry um that has a sway over like an influence over um people that you want to be selling to so your target audience um quite often they'll have a very specialized knowledge um be that food be that travel um and because they have a pre-existing presence in that niche it makes them such a great tool uh, to use for launching you know your brand to different audiences um, when we're talking about micro influencers, um, by definition, it's someone like me who has less than 100,000 followers um, on Instagram, for example, which I think is quite a considerable amount of followers, really. Um, and that number obviously sounds quite high to small businesses, but various platforms sort of define that number differently. Um, and they tend to have higher engagement rates. Um, more targeted audiences, um, they're more affordable to use, um, and they also tend to be a little bit more authentic um, because they've got that smaller presence. Um, you know, when you're looking at micro influencers in comparison to influencers, um, you know, that the media sort of like to go after at the minute, um, it's like people who are on like Love Island and, and things yeah. like that. Um, so um, they're great for small businesses because. Uh, if you've got a very niche product, it's likely that there's going to be an influencer in that space. So things like, uh, you know, if you've got an eco-friendly brand or, um, you know, it's yeah, environmentally friendly, there's a really great community on Instagram of um, e bloggers who write about um, eco-friendly tips and things like that. But then within the eco-friendly space, you probably have more niches. So think people might be writing specifically about eco-friendly beauty or, you know, vegan food and things like that. So within all these sort of like umbrellas of different business, um, you know, business niches, you've got sort of more niche um, mm -hmm. within that. Um, so for me, if, you know, with small businesses, if they want to work with influencers, you know, it's important that you're picking influencers that are relevant to the niche and don't just go after the follower number because it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't always equal um you know you're not always going to get all the sales from it you might gain the brand awareness but do you want the vanity metric of you know having 10,000 followers or do you want the vanity metric of having like 10,000 sales 
So yeah, like, <laughs> I know that you're very specific and you you know put a lot of time into making sure that you only represent or influence brands that you're really dedicated to and that you really believe in. Mm -hmm. um, so finding that kind of if a small business, you know, they wanted to get a micro influence, so it's important for them to find somebody that's really authentically interested in in that in their product or service. Is that fair? Yeah. To because yeah. Wow. Yeah, and I think that is like another great advantage of social media is it opens up this huge community of people who are sort of already influencers for your brand because, um, you know, the small businesses I work, who I have worked with, most of the relationships that I have with them, I've I've started off as a customer anyway. Um, and then I've gone on to, you know, promote them a bit more and, and work with them on a paid basis. So, um, you know... Ugh. And they're small businesses that like you have to respect, you know, you, yeah. you have to expect that as well. Um, but yeah, having, it, it always works best when the person that you're working with has like a real genuine passion for your business and would recommend your business regardless of whether you were working with them or not. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, so you've been really helpful and you've offered some really great tips today. I'm hoping that our audience have probably got floods of questions for you. <laughs> Yeah, before um, before you go, so uh, just going back to the uh, to the bakery, what what question, what ideas would you have for the bakery, for example? Uh, so Blue Moon Bakery, I've actually got a box of brownies sitting downstairs uh, at the moment that I'm going to enjoy with my coffee. Heather actually Lovely. dropped some off yesterday. <laughs> so <Wonderful>. hi, Heather. <laughs> um, so okay, so bakery business, I would sit down and have have a think about. Um, all the different sort of like pillars of your business so um come up with like three to five content pillars that you could sustainably post about on social media so obviously one of those is going to be cake um but the other pillar could be um you know you might do some reels that are on instagram um where you're sort of doing behind the scenes of making the cakes and then like another pillar, um, I saw Heather mention testimonials, could actually be testimonials and customer photos of your product. Um, and I think that's a really important thing to incorporate into a social media strategy because, um, you know, as I said, you don't wanna just be banging the sales drum all the time, but if you have quotes and photos from people and reviews and stuff that you can share, even if it is just in like a nice sort of graphic, um, it's somebody else saying that your brand is great and people buy off recommendation and they, you know, they use for recommendations from their friends. So yeah, have a think, so content pillars um, and sort of have a think about um, the sort of types of content that you can post. And if you're having the aim to post three times a week, then that's already three pieces of content. So Chris, if Heather was delivering like a box, you know, of, of brownies or goodies or something to somebody, would it be mm -hmm. useful for a business like that, perhaps to put in a little card that said like, please leave us a Google review or, yeah. or something like that, that kind of thing really helped? Absolutely. So yeah, having a, um, you know, leaving, making sure that your social media um, handles are clear on a business card, uh, encouraging people to, to leave a review and, you know, things like getting people to share a photo on Instagram and then every month you pick someone to receive a free box of brownies it's just like a really good incentive to to leave reviews mm -hmm. yeah. I've, I think I'd be inclined I think if, in the community building piece if I was delivering my box of brownies to you Sophie I might say, actually video myself with the box going up and mm -hmm. saying here I am I'm on my way doing a delivery yeah. um obviously cut off before we get to your front door because you're you're <laughs> you're a big celebrity and you don't want it, people to know where you are. Um, actually, but, but then you could, you would see that, I imagine, and then comment on it and share it on yourself. And it's yeah. it's that community building piece. I just want to bring Paul back into the room, uh, if I may, for Heather's question that she's asked. Um, Watcher, she said, uh, do you recommend having a website? This is Heather uh, Blue Moon Bakery. Heather's worried about it being just her and having too many emails and sales. Great problem to have, Heather. But the question is, uh, do you recommend having a website? Paul, what do you think? Oh, he's gone. That's, oh, that's what he thinks. Really. <laughs> <laughs> uh, while we're waiting for Paul to come back, Sophie, what do you think of that? Uh, yes, to a website. Um, I think it's quite a big, um, it can feel like quite a bit big step going forward, but um, although all your customers might be on social media, um, people are also using Google to search for businesses. Um, so, you know, even if it is just a very basic 
um, website with details of how to contact you and how to order. It doesn't have to be like a full blown online shop. Um, it just gets you on, yeah, on Google. And also I always say to people, if your Instagram page, you know, God forbid it happened, d disappeared tomorrow, do you have any other channel that you can communicate to people on? And because the answer is, doesn't it? Yeah. Instagram likes to shut <laughs> his accounts down. There's, yeah. um, there's, there's a, a photographer based in Milton Keynes. She's a wedding photographer. And I remember all of a sudden her Instagram shut her Instagram yeah. shop down, shut her feed down. And she was desperately posting on her personal feed and on the website. Please, I'm still here. But yeah. if you haven't got those other channels, you're scuppered. Yeah. Paul, you're, you're back, PK. I'm just I'm, I'm interested. Obviously, one of the pillars at Proper Marketing is the marketing advisor piece. Um, where you go in and, and really do an audit, don't you? And a, a rough and ready look through the business. I'm interested what your advice would be. Based on that question, do you recommend having a website? I'll expand on that slightly. What would your recommendations be for Heather and her bakery? Uh, yeah, it's a very good question. Um, I think the personality, the community, all the things, Sophie, you're so incredibly clever, you're really good, you're spot on, I love it. Um, uh, giving value, all those things, uh, it's going to happen on a website. Um, it's the right place to land. It's where you'd want people to start to learn about you, um, show your personality, be alive and well on there. Um, and uh, again, not just about sales. Um, so often when we do website audits, it's all promotion, 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 it's product, 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 all the way through. Um, and and I, I believe that's a sort of a misguided way to run a website. Um, and actually in a personality business or a business that's run by a real person who has a passion uh, for their uh, chosen sport, then you should talk about your passion. And I think if that, if the end result of that, the outcome, if you like, is that you do get far too many inquiries or far too many emails or, or the business just um, gets swamped by that, you then need to start looking at your business design and think, okay, well, there's clearly the demand for it. People do want what I need. And then it becomes a different problem of finding some money, working out how to scale, um, and then it's process and, and all those things. Um, but yeah, uh, no website is a really bad thing. Um, apart from anything else, if someone types in what little bit they know of you, Heather, um, or, or if you typed in Heather, the lady who's regularly, constantly delivering cake to the people at Proper Marketing or, or something yeah. like that, <laughs> just as an example, if you, you can record this and play it back, um, then um, obviously the SEO, the search engine optimization stuff, the 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 ideal is to get to the top of the search engine results pages so um, if you can get on page one just by being an interesting person and and having people engaging with your site google will recognize you're alive and well and make sure that you are um it, it google's mantra of course is serving the best possible answer to its customer so if you appear to be the best possible answer then uh, your website will, will help massively towards that absolutely uh, another question's come in uh, from Samantha. Hello, Samantha. They're saying, how many times would you recommend posting a week? Now, this is an interesting debate to have with the folk in the room. Um, and actually, I'd like to bring uh, Andrew in to this conversation as well, who is head of Words and Pictures at Proper Marketing. Uh, and here he comes. Hello, Andrew. Hello. So the reason for bringing Andrew in on this conversation is that we there's a service at Proper Marketing called Words and Pictures where we create one one article and one picture a month. And the idea of that is we create we create beautiful content. Um, and I'll ask Andrew to tell us a bit about that in a moment. Um, but there's a very strong, de interesting debate. Do we post once a month and do it well, or do we post a lot and do it equally well, but differently? I'll go to Sophie first, because I can see she's got an opinion burning behind her eyes. Oh, um, I mean, it does, yeah. I think posting less regularly and doing it well is better than just, yeah, you know, spamming everyone with stuff because I think um you know I, I've experienced it myself I've you know I thought oh god I've not posted on Instagram today I'll I'll just whack up a post so that I've got content on there and it's just gone like it's just not done very well people haven't seen it they've not liked it and I think people can tell when it's half-hearted mm -hmm. um now I sit down at the start of the week and I'm like okay what are my posts and what content have I got coming up on my blog um and i max you know i'll post three times a week but it's three quality posts rather than you know five to seven posts that i've not absolutely. thought about absolutely and that kind of roots um, back to what you said initially um sophie sorry if you don't mind was about planning isn't it because yeah you need to have a plan for everything and if you have a plan right from the offset of the order of the things that you're going to say on your social media the pictures that you're going to post which sites you're going to put them on 
it just that's that's a strategy really isn't it that that gives it strength. Yeah. um and and that makes it a lot kind of clearer for the for the following and the customers that are seeing it definitely andrew tell us a bit about words and pictures and and how that works and how that fits in with the content piece well, words and pictures um, does pretty much what it says on the tin. Uh, the idea is that um, I, as the journalist, as the interviewer, will go in and see the client once a month, more if they wish, but certainly a minimum once a month, and we'll talk about really whatever the client wants to talk about, what the um, the hot topic is in, in his or her field, uh, whether there's a, a burning issue that they need to discuss, uh, a new product, a uh, new appointment, so a new sales director, for example. Um, they've won an award, they're moving premises, they want a new contract. It can be anything. There's so many stories in business that um, I think because we're all so busy doing our day jobs, we don't have the time to investigate and tell properly and use to their best effect. And often there's there's a, a really good message that businesses can get out there and they just don't have the time or the wherewithal or, and I don't mean this unkindly, the knowledge to actually get it out and use it to its best effect. And that's where we come in. Mm -hmm. and, and it's an interesting uh, actually, looking at the people on the screen, it's quite an interesting flow because uh, Andrew would go and get that content, and then we, I would sit and do the advising piece, and then Sophie, you would, you're the engine, really, aren't you? That then makes that go and gets it out there. Which Sophie? Sophie <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I mean, I think yeah, and I think um, with social, the beauty of it is that you can say the same thing, but in so many different ways. So yeah. you could have, you know, a one thousand word article. But that could make five to ten social media posts. You could do a video on it. You could do a live chat on it. You could do, you know, there's so much potential for it. And then again, that's a month's worth of content that you've basically got for a social media campaign. Um, and then you can just keep driving it back to your website so they get to read the full article or download the resource. And, and yeah, mm, that's really useful. And and, and interesting thing, what we talking about. I was going to say. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> There's an interesting question. Uh, Samantha from Aurora's Attic is commenting, and this is a question that I never know the answer to in my guise of doing a bit of social media for businesses. Should we be posting on weekends or not posting on weekends? Sophie Ann. Depends on your audience. So I think so if you go on to your Facebook analytics or your Instagram analytics and analytics, you will be able to see when your audience is most active. Um, so for some businesses weekends their audience tends to be on online a lot um other businesses they're most active monday to wednesday or wednesday to friday so it is actually information that is accessible to you via um the analytics you can get via platform um mm -hmm. but also i think you should pair it with when you're willing as well because i know everyone's got to have a life i'm starting to switch off more at weekends mm -hmm. because i want to just work during the week um so I think it's a balance of finding when your audience is most active, um, but also finding a schedule that works for you so you still maintain a bit of a life balance as well. Absolutely. That's really <laughs> useful stuff. Um, Sophie, I think, uh, Sophie N, um, we've, uh, <laughs> have you got any other final parting tips for, for us? Uh, parting tips? Oh, you've really put me on the spot. No. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't be allowed to talk. I'll be quiet. Sophie, oh, you ask a better question than that. Well, I was just actually going to say, Sophie, you've probably given some like really, really valuable advice to our, our audience today. And if, if if they did want to know more about you, is it www.sophieetc.com? That's it. Yeah. So that's my blog. Um, and then I am on Instagram as well. Same handle. Um, and then social, etc. is my other handle for my social media biz which will be launching very soon that's really Honestly, exciting thank you. thank you so much for joining us okay thanks, thanks guys thank you, thank you. Thanks, um and uh, i'm going to disappear as well for a moment sophie and i'm going to leave andrew <laughs> so i'm going to leave you in sophie's capable hands thank you so much yeah, so i think andrew when you were talking about words and pictures before i think one of the things that one of the ways that we describe it at proper is that it's kind of about the story that the business wants to tell. They, they know what they want to say, but they're not quite sure how to get it out there. And, and maybe they're not sure how to present it on their social media or how to present it on their website. So kind of you come along with a cameraman and you take really great photos and you interview them and you ask them the questions, the right questions, so that they can really tell that story really kind of beautifully and, and, and well. 
That's right. That's exactly what we do. And there, there's also the option of a, um, and it depends what the content is. We can do still photography. There's also the option of video as well. We can do video in an interview like we're doing now. We could we could film something like that with a client talking to them about, as I said before, whatever they want to talk about. You know, if, if they're exporting, how has the post Brexit world affected the way they do things? What new issues has that raised for them? We can do interviews one to one, more sort of profile soft colour pieces about um, the new sales director or the new premises that they've moved into. There's, as I said, there's endless sort of possibilities. And um, we, I'm not sure if you were here earlier, but we had Heather, lovely Heather, who has just set up her own bakery and, and was kind of querying a bit as, as how to get get the word out. And and for, for small businesses like that to come along and take really great photos or videos of her products, of her food, that can be really great can't it because that kind of just sh shows it off in its best possible light absolutely it does i mean the saying as we all know is you know a picture paints a thousand words and i love pictures because it means i have to write less in my day job as an <laughs> editor of a publication but <laughs> in all truthfulness they do pictures are just as powerful if not more powerful than words in terms yeah. of selling something because it's a visual image that somebody will react to and they'll react to it favorably or not um words all all the, the words will complement that and they will enhance the, the impact of the picture by running the words around it. Yeah, and, and if you have a process as opposed to just a product or a service, perhaps words and moving pictures is another thing that we can do where you um, don't just take photos, but you actually take some video content because sometimes that's even better. That really gets people to understand what you're about, doesn't it? I think so, yeah. I mean, that, that, that's the beauty of the offer that we've got is that we can adapt it to each client and each client each month that that's it's it's what i love about the, the job of being a journalist of being an editor is that you start each publication with a blank sheet of paper and you create something from nothing and and you print it and it goes out and everybody likes it hopefully um but it's, it's exactly the same with the sort of offer with the words and pictures is doing we're starting each month with each client with a blank sheet of paper saying right what do you want to talk about what's your what's your issue what's your what's the, the priority for you to get across in your marketing message this month or for the next three months, six months, whatever it may be. And we'll take it from there and we'll develop it and we'll extract. Sometimes we extract the, the story behind the story or even the story that the business and the client themselves don't even realize is there. And it's only when we sort of extract that through having a conversation with them and, you, and we perhaps point them towards the impact of what they're doing by the, their staff doing a, a volunteer day with a, a local school or something like that that can be developed to its full extent. And the business sometimes doesn't realize that. And it's up to, uh, it's my job to sort of suggest, put these things forward and see what's most appropriate for the client. Yeah, and it's kind of like diversifying your content even further. Like it's all it's doing is it is expanding the amount of platforms and the amount of different kind of things that you utilize to get the word out there. Um, so it's kind of just adding another dimension to it really, isn't it? It is, and it is. And, and the basic offer, is, as Stephen said earlier, is, is the article that we'll write once a month. But as Sophie N alluded to when, when, when she was with us, um, you can extract bits, extracts from from thousand word article and use it as a social media post, as a little video clip on LinkedIn or YouTube or whatever. The possibilities are endless. You can we can create press releases from the article that's written if it's a specific contract award, as I say, or an appointment. Yeah, there's lots of things that can be done from that from that one interview. So it's 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 good value. And actually, there's a, a couple of questions come in about personality and, and how how much should a, per, a business be based on a personality? My personal answer to that is people buy people and they want to buy from you. So there should be a face to your business. Um, but the, the actual question that Heather's asked is that she'd love to do stories, but she worries that whether people care about her or whether it's just the food. Maybe that's our fault. We've talked more about hot cross buns than we have about Heather. Sorry, that was <laughs> that's my fault. Um, I, I, my immediate response to that is absolutely, Heather, particularly because it's your business. And you, you spoke a bit earlier in the chat about um, about the fact that I think you were on maternity leave and you started the business because you were in a situation to do it. That's a brilliant story. And that's what people will buy. And I think that's a bit what Words and Pictures does, Andrew. It extracts those kind of stories. Is that right? That's the idea. Well, I, we, my, my job is to have is to go in with a, a set of questions, to talk to a client about, about a specific subject. But the beauty of the job is that you never actually know where the conversation is going to take you. It can take you in a totally different direction from from your original plan, if you like. And really, you have no alternative but to go with the flow. And each client is different. And if you hit upon the right question, who knows where it'll take you? So, yeah. Absolutely.
Well, thank you, Andrew. That's really helpful. Uh, it's great to know a bit more. And we'll keep talking in the comments about words and pictures. And I'm sure um, Heather and Samantha and the others would would like to chat more about it. And we'll we'll keep talking. Yeah, please thank do. You. I'm here. So, yeah, far away. Thanks, thank Andrew. you. Um, let's bring uh, another uh, presenter onto the stage now. Can we have Tim? Tim Lee can come and join us. Hello, Tim. Now you're on mute, Tim. Now you'd think after a year of zooming, you'd have known you'd have known how to not be on mute. Wouldn't Everyone's you? protected that kind of thing. Oh, I've been telling myself for the last ten minutes as well. <laughs> <laughs> now Tim and I uh, met many years ago uh, through different businesses, and have, have re, re sort of formed the, the the connection now through your networking group, Tim. Tell us a little bit about it. Tell us what you do. Yeah, well, uh, my business is called Collaborate MK. Uh, we formed in early August, and um, and and yeah, quite simply, uh, I was bit by the bug of of Zoom events and just how well networking was uh, uh, online. Which, if we had this conversation a year ago, we would have all laughed. You know, I was so used to running venue events and running a business club and so on um never thought it would ever work online but it really does work online and um and yeah got the bug and yeah we've grown as a business very fast you know so. and, and we've talked a lot today about community building and an awful lot about social media that do you think that dovetails into what you're talking about it, it does and, I, and again it, we, i would not be saying these words a year ago because you went to a networking event you would meet people you'd have a conversation you'd have breakfast together and so on and it all you're always building relationships but not at the speed of of virtual um breakout rooms have done the trick there and what i've seen in this last uh, nine months or no it really is about a year but certainly in this last six months is literally small collaborations of groups forming together businesses working closely together but the thing that le leaps out to me is support. It wouldn't have entered our heads, I don't think, honestly, a year ago. I've always had a very, very commercial mind. <laughs> Years of retail, electrical retail, which is very commercially based, as you can imagine. Uh, MK Don's Football Club, very commercially based, because that was my role, and so on. Uh, and newspaper advertising and so on. Um, but did the word support come into my mind? This all changed a year ago when we're all out there supporting each other and helping and, and it's amazing difference just by forming groups, small groups. And I think the, the real difference has been in the past networking. I mean, we're, we're from Milton Keynes, Tim, and, and we it's yeah. fair to say we could network three meals a day, couldn't we? Oh. And not, you wouldn't need to go home to eat. But the problem <laughs> with that was you would always see the same people and invariably, and I, 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 uh, Paul Kitcher, I don't know if you want to pop back on and, and I'm sure you'll have an input on this. We would see the same people every single meeting uh the conversations would be lovely but you'd chat to your mates wouldn't you and you'd have something to eat and you'd never earn any money out of it you'd never do any business but but the way because of the because of the need and that support network it actually does something now and this networking and communication we, we're creating really valuable connections yeah yeah totally it's completely changed it would be like that and i don't think paul would mind me saying we, we'd often talk cars at the jeffrey lever event at lunchtime you know <laughs> it was a, a terrific event and you and i met some great people there that are now members of collaborate mk but where i'm coming from is that no it was more of a meetup and you're always building those relationships but you not always take that that step further so to speak you know and uh, but it's so different when you're there in three different breakout rooms you've met 15 people and you've had pretty much 15 in-depth conversations as well and all sort of rammed into sort of 15 minutes but it's amazing what can be done so i, I was interested in, interesting to see that the networking online the most wonderful thing is how approachable everybody is because you're yeah. talking to a screen and you're in your own space and um, yeah. the, there's a barrier that definitely drops you know what it's like you're in a room you see someone over there and you think oh, i'd like to speak to them but i've no idea who they are um, yeah. Or even if they'd appreciate me going over and chatting, but we are at a networker, so and you have this argument with yourself, don't you? Mm -hmm. Whereas the online version is so easy, isn't it? I can PM you now and say, "Hello, Tim. Ages since we spoke." Or, or "What do you do?" And and you tell me. So it's it really good from that point. It, it, it's amazing, and 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 it is the future. It, you know, the whole aim is it will be venue events, which we're all desperate to get back to. Believe me, um, but it'd be a lovely mixture of 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 um, 
online and venue events. And I think most most business clubs are thinking on those lines as well. You know, uh, we do desperate to meet face to face, but this is the way. You, you, it's it's a more mean sometimes more meaningful conversation, and yeah. you also find out more about the person as well. Because let's talk about the album collection behind me. Let's talk about the dog that's asleep behind yeah. me, and so. It's amazing, and it's a cracking icebreaker when you you're having a one to one on a Zoom with someone you haven't met before. You know, mm. great. And it's I, a terrific icebreaker. Well, that, that everyone's in the same boat, aren't they? Kind of everyone's in that same situation where they're at home. You really yeah. just kind of you for the first ten minutes of when you meet somebody on a networking event, you kind of just talk about how rubbish it is that everyone's still stuck inside, and oh, I'm really sorry if my dog runs past the back or something yeah. like that. And it's kind of that that barrier. Whereas yeah. before you might have walked up in a suit. And had a glass of wine now there's that kind of barrier that's been broken and, and it's more friendly and it's more personable and, and you're actually meeting a lot of people from quite a broad spectrum of industries i was at an event the other day there are people from all over the country there and they, because they weren't just local businesses and they weren't kind of all in the same niche it was amazing you got to meet people that you'd never have heard of and people that before that place in the country you'd never been able to get to mm. 100 percent it's a different world altogether honestly and and yeah for, for people who've got businesses uh, want to expand much further outside of milton Keynes and the home counties wow you can be you can go to a networking event now in newcastle liverpool or wherever you know um so no, it, it's it no this is well and truly here to stay um, sophie neil you've got an interesting version of how this works actually we've, we've not talked about food for five minutes so let's say uh, <laughs> That. <laughs> I'm back with food. Um, yeah, so I I started Sophie's Supper Club, um, which is an event that I run in collaboration with independent restaurants in Milton Keynes. Um, and one of the reasons I started it was because um, I didn't feel like there was any sort of social based uh, things to do in Milton Keynes where you could meet people not on a business basis. Um, so I, I did three physical events uh, before lockdown. Um, and then a couple of weeks ago, I decided to try it virtually. Um, so I did a virtual wine tasting and tapas event with um, two local businesses. Um, and I think, yeah, like Tim said, I'm really surprised at how well it worked. Mm. Um, it wasn't the same um, as my sort of physical supper club, because the whole point is I sit people next to other people that they don't know purposefully um, and people sort of come away and have sort of genuine friendships and connections um, but it did work virtually um, and I think it was because yeah you had sort of like the wine tasting and taking people through but um, it's definitely given part of the pun a lot of food for thought in terms of um, <laughs> what what can be done virtually and I think um, I think virtual events will sort of hang around for a while. I think you're right I think you're right um and now before thank you sophie and tim both for joining us <laughs> yes, it's been fantastic let's give you both a chance to to give a quick plug before you go um tim first give us a plug for collaborate mk well the next event's tuesday uh, coming uh 10 30 till 12 o'clock guests are welcome at any time we have a thing called buy me a virtual coffee which is three just three pounds you pay online uh, uh, in the chat and that and that goes to uh charlotte moyle at uh, mk charities so wonderful we ask um, from a guest sophie Ann? i wish i could plug another supper club event but that's in <laughs> progress uh so i'm gonna plug my my own facebook group which is for all the foodies in milton Keynes. um it's called eat and explore mk um and it's a place for you to share your independent foodie finds reviews recommendations so um if you love food and um you know want to find local places to eat and drink then uh, come and join me in there Wonderful. Sophie, Tim, thank you both so much for joining us and stick around. Hopefully we'll talk to you some more in the chat. Sophie R. Oh. I think it's uh, important that at this point we just really thank Johnny, who ironically slightly can't, can't come on because of a technical issue, but is actually mm. super, super technical whiz. He's our sponsor today and our tech partner. And um, yeah, so he he's doing some some web events, is that right, Stephen? Yeah, John, Johnny runs a company called Fox Wiley, who are our sponsor today. But funnily enough, as I said, Johnny, I met Johnny through Tim's Collaborate MK group. So it just shows to show how these things go. But Fox Wiley are an event company at heart. And they, but before the, the lockdown, I think we've gone all the way through without saying the C word. So I'm not going to say it now. Um, but before lockdown, we uh, Johnny's company was doing live events, corporate events, and the, the you know, the, the, the big award ceremonies and dinners and banquets and all of that kind of stuff 
And of course, that's all dried up. So he had to diversify his business very quickly. And Fox Wiley now run online events, uh, a bit like this one, really. So we, we've partnered with Fox Wiley to run our webinars. Delighted that he's done this for us today. And in fact, that he stepped up to sponsor this event too. Uh, so big thanks to you, Johnny. Um, I, because, because he's running the event for us, he's struggling to come on as well. So next time, Johnny, we'll have you on as a guest, maybe. <laughs> um, Sophie, thank you so much for hosting today. And I'm sorry if I talk too much. You always talk too much. It's no surprise. No, <laughs> well, you'll be um, Piers yeah. and Susanna, but I'm a Piers that sticks around, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, um, big thank you to all our panellists today. Hopefully they've been able to give some expert advice and a huge, huge thank you to all our new members of our Facebook group, uh, our Facebook hub, all the audience that were watching today. If you have any more questions, any more comments you'd like to make, please do stick them in the Facebook group chat, private message, public discussion, or visit our website. We'll be more than happy. The whole the whole focus of the conversation at the moment and, and of our business is, is to really just see what, what kind of free and useful advice we can give to people. So so do drop us a message. Absolutely. Thank you very much. We'll Great. see you all next time here in the Proper Marketing Facebook Hub. See you later. <laughs>